Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Visual Impressions on NTA. I am Omar Omar Mohammed. Impasto came into existence in the 17th century when painters such as Rembrandt, Franz Holz, and Diego Velasquez used it skillfully and minutely to work impastos to depict lines and wrinkled skins or the sparkle of elaborately crafted armor and rich jewelry. But today, a lot of artists and painters are craftily using it to work on their paintings. One of such artists is Ajene. His painting has a depth feel which makes it look three-dimensional. Please, let's all take a look. Ajene Isegbe, a multi-dimensional visual artist who studied sculpture at the prestigious Amadebele University, Zaria. Upon his graduation in 1984, he went into full-time studio practice and has been actively painting till date. He has also been commissioned for several works of art within and outside the shores of Nigeria. He has participated in a number of exhibitions. He recently held his first solar exhibition at Third Pyramid Art Center with the theme Time and Chant, with over 80 pieces of sculptures, paintings and drawings. Jenny has really undergone a lot of metamorphosis from a sculptor to a multi-dimensional artist where he has proven himself that he's a living legend. Okay, his portraitures are very unique, partially created with a particular technique called impasto, which he has used effectively in his portraits because of his cultural and his sculptural background. He has this way of loading paints into his his uh, paintings, so it's an impasto technique. And also, he has been able to use primary colors effectively, absolutely. And with his cobelinial forms, he has been able to interpret you know, his themes very, very well. This is about protection of children and defense of child uh, social life, child abuse. If you look at the moves that the figures are carrying, they are bigger than the size of the human figures in the composition. And this is, you know, a reflection of what we term as child abuse. And then the, uh, the figures of the, the, the symbol of, of a legal a scale and all the this you see there are for the defense of child rights. You understand? So I try to use this painting to discourage, you know, over laboring and under aid child. That is what this painting is all about. It is a feeling, even if the child is not showing because of fears of torture, you can see that they are all weeping. These are tears, they are not sweat. So it's an expression of pains and bitterness that under eight children go through when they overlabor them. That is what I have expressed in this painting. And this painting was done right for some time, 2015. So I've been preserving it for a day like this that it should be showcased for the public. This sculpture here is an expression of the feelings of the Chibok girls' mothers. You can see the weeping face. See, these curves here represent the value of the cultural costume of the people around that area. And then the eyes looking downward is feeling so shy about the circumstances that she was exposed to from you know, the experience of some of those girls who were virgin and taken away prematurely into you know, unknown destinations. So the bitterness is like, you know, an assault to, to women. In giving a um, title to teams of art, we try to be as versatile as possible. Let the title represent an interpretation of every individual who comes across a piece of art. I call this twisted judgment because the generality of the judgment and the government 
you know, explanation to people concerning the Chibok experience is very unsatisfactory to a lot of people. So this one now is not particularly a judge in the court per se, but it's a judgment of the conscience. That is what it represents. And if you see the expression of the face, it's wearing the wig representing the law. The wig here represents the law. The frowning on the face is a decision that he has taken against his wish. That is why it is titled Twisted Judgment. The usage of the line to make statements marvelous. And I'm so happy for him. Because uh, all what he's trying to do is to pass a message. And you know, as an artist, the art that comes from the inner mind is different from the art of carrying somebody's picture to put and draw. For me, I don't look at those things as being creative. Because already the original person is being made by God. But like this, this your creativity, what comes into mind, your thoughts and the presentation of itself, the rendition. So it's what marvels me. This is an expression of love. It is a direct composition. When you see people coming together in embrace like this, it portrays either a reconciliation or an expression of love or unity. And it is reflective of what is every, every good-hearted desire to have the world united. So there is something that is peculiar to this painting that I experimented. If you look at the, you know, the surface of this painting, it has some kind of textures. And there is a kind of material that unifies all the colors, even though the colors are appearing faintly behind a very common brownish effect. It is to unify these colors in line with the theme of the painting. So the painting is simple, simply unity, love, and uh, togetherness. Right from when I was a child, I've been watching him draw, make sculptures, mold and all of that. And he actually has a passion for it. And we've really been waiting for this day when he will do his solo exhibition. And I think most of his artworks are missing. So we're like, okay, pick a day and do this before they buy them all. Because when I say missing, I mean they've been bought. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Uh, we've been waiting for a day like this when he would showcase his work. husband and wife, first experience, all of them are looking up to expectations of what will come out of what the, the, the experience of the pregnant wife. You know, what is special about this work to me as an artist is the method of execution of the work. I did not use brush. I use palette to give it some sculptural effect, to give it a motif, to give it a relief, and to give emphasis to the effect of the work. Um, the theme of the exhibition would say is um, time and chance. Well, um, I'm a Christian and I believe so much in time because the Bible says for everything under the sun there's a time and say time to cry, time to unite, time to fight, time to eat, time to sleep, time to live, time to die. So they have done a very great job here and I'm really impressed.
this painting here is about royalty. This is the queen and that is the king. All the figures in these compositions are entertainers, creating amusement and entertainment to adore the royalty. So it takes careful observation to see the activities of the figures that are using expressing this composition. So it is all about the adoration of the palace life, the adoration of the king and the queen, entertaining them, creating amusement for them so that they should be able to have peace, happiness all the time to look after their kingdom. Mr. Jenner's works are they're mind blowing. Um, the, the work is so fantastic. You know, this this work and uh, can meet any international exhibition. We made a compilation of three renowned artists in diaspora who have raised the bar of creativity by expressing their diverse experiences of culture and identity in their works. The trio are Yinka Shonibari, Osarenti Ehosa Henry, and Kaede Wiley. Please enjoy. Yinka Shonibari is a British Nigerian artist living in the United Kingdom. His work explores cultural identity, colonialism, and postcolonialism with the contemporary context of globalization. Because he has a physical disability that paralyzes one side of his body, Shoni Bari uses assistance to make works under his direction, operating himself as a conceptual artist. The hallmark of his art is the brightly colored Ankara fabric he uses. I make my work is that I start from sketches or I also start from research. Uh, if there are issues I'm particularly concerned about, then look for ways of representing those. But then the actual um, making of them, I have a studio in which I work with different craftspeople. When I was at college here, you know, I had a lot of interest in international politics and I basically was making work at that time about what was going on in Russia at Perestroika. And one of my teachers said, but you're of African origin, aren't you? Why aren't you producing authentic African art? And it, it was actually at that point, I started to use the fabric in my work because I felt that the story of the fabric is very interesting. Osarentin Ehosa Henry is a multiple award-winning artist who was born in Edo State. He trained at the famous art school, Auto Polytechnic, Edo State. His sense of creativity never diminished in his chosen creative path as he continued to practice his craft. He won Life in My City Art Competition in 2013 and he was also the winner of the Spanish painting competition in 2011. Osarentin Ehosa Henry has been practicing as a painter and sculptor. His technique captures the actual appearance of his subjects composed into a space in a visually arresting manner. He relocated to the United States where he has had two solo exhibitions to his credit and a number of group exhibitions. When I'm painting, I feel so much alive. I feel as if I'm at the top of the world because 
art is my life, is my tradition. Apart, apart from uh, painting on canvas, I usually go into painting on wall, both interior and exterior. When I'm not painting, I listen to music or I go outside for sightseeing to gather references. I get my inspiration for my day-to-day -day life that I normally come across and experience in my locality. Ken De Wiley, a New York-based visual artist who is better known for his highly naturalistic paintings of African Americans, is of Yoruba descendant through his father and his mother is an African American. He has firmly situated himself within art history's portrait painting traditions. He was the first black artist to paint an official portrait of a US president. He was commissioned by the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery to paint a portrait of former President Barack Obama in 2017. His works engages the science and techniques of the heroic, powerful, majestic, and is sublime in his representations of urban, black and brown men found throughout the world. In 2018, Kendi was included in Time Magazine's 100 Most Influential People in the World. Artists are people who occupy different spaces, and I think a lot of us, not only artists, but people of color, know what it means to code switch. Being able to occupy multiple spaces, in a way, exemplifies where America is. The conflicting twin narratives that can be at once appalling and, and beguiling exist in all of us, and I think that's part of what my work is about. What I was always struck by when I, whenever I saw his portraits was the degree to which they challenged our conventional views of power and privilege. Historically, portraiture has always been about saying yes to things that we want to celebrate. A society saying, who are the people that we collectively want to honor? And particularly with a presidential portrait, this is the highest aspect of that tradition. And it's been uh, an extraordinary uh, honor to be able to participate. My name is Jonas schwarz -Laustin. I'm the co-owner of Nordic Hotels in Nigeria. I would like to endorse uh, visual impressions. I think you should keep watching it. It's a fantastic program. Uh, cheers to that. The sudden outbreak of the coronavirus, which has transformed into a worldwide pandemic, posing as a serious threat to human life and the core essence of Nigeria as a nation. There was an exhibition which was recently held at Dreamhouse Art Gallery with the theme United in Pandemic and United as a Nation. The purpose of the exhibition was to highlight the artistic version of expressions in the fight against the coronavirus pandemic by beautiful strokes of brush and canvas. People were predicting how the pandemic would hit us. They predicted doom. But then you see, we're able to gather here together. If it was a doom case, we would not be here together. Right? Great. Also, united as a nation, um, Nigeria has spent 60 years, all of us together, um, despite the ongoing protests, uh, people talking about um, ending SARS and all of that, and people lamenting about the government. We see that we're still moving as a nation, and we're doing good.
painting titled Make a Move. You can see a, a young boy with a basket full of tomato. He doesn't move out to this actual spot, hustle or look for any other business. We just stay. If you are in one place, people will not recognize you. This painting is titled Focus because there is a determination for it. Basically, what inspired me about the painting was I was having some issues before now with painting itself. Painting a real face, I was doing more of abstract. As you can see, I use this blue, a Chinese painting that is called the Blue Woman. That was the first face with the same title, Focus. So I've stayed focused for long. Let me put it into reality. This thing that I'll be dreaming about, let me bring it out to the world. That's how come about the painting itself. In the painting, you can see a, a thousand notes, a face and different hands. It all means the, the problem we are facing right now. Our youth, everybody are after money. The way and the level of pursuing money in Nigeria is out of hand. We commit so many crimes, evils, just to make money. And the worst part of it, our parents don't ask questions how we make that money. We all celebrate people who are rich. If you go to social media, they celebrate evil instead of good. People will tell you, work, don't work hard, you should work smart. Does that mean in the next generation, there is nothing like education? Since we don't work hard, you just come out of school, you join Yahoo or join all all sorts of evil just to make money. So now, like the old saying that says in church, the money is the root of all evil. We are the people that create money. So how do we allow that small, tiny paper to rule over us? The, the works here are very interesting, very colorful. There's actually, I haven't seen any work that I can connect with. I can connect virtually every work, but this one actually stands out because it's it's very vibrant and the title as well, Fear of the Unknown. That's actually how the world is now today with the pandemic, you know, in relation to the theme of the exhibition, Fear of the Unknown. You know, so it's a very remarkable exhibition, very interesting works, real conversational art pieces and the ambience as well is very relaxing, very homely and it's an exhibition that I would like more people to come out to come and to see. But I saw one just at the entrance as we were coming in and it was like the root of a tree, a tree that has been cut. And now the interesting thing wasn't that the tree was cut, the tree jumped out at, at whoever is looking at this and it had a little shoot coming out. And I see that and I think, okay, this, this could be likened to Nigeria whatever has happened to us there's always that ray of hope somewhere that there's always there could always be a new beginning you know there's hope for a better future and when i saw that little shoot you know it, you make you can miss it if you're looking at the painting because you're looking at the roots that has been caught and the roots really looking at you shooting out at you so you may miss that little growth at the tip of that tree and it, i thought it was absolutely amazing collector is not even an artist by specialization, but out of interest and her love for art, she decided to go into this, which is wonderful, which is great, and I'm happy as an artist to see a non-artist in this regard. So my mom has a civil service background and feels that you must be employable. They are not of the school of thought that, you know, one can employ themselves, but you can't blame them. That generation, a lot of them were public servants, right? So she'll always be like, who is going to employ you? Nobody. How can you study finance in school? Where would they employ you? Nobody. No, 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 no. And so my mom filled in quantity surveying for me. And that's what I went ahead to study in school. When they go with the idea that they want to study, the parents will say, are you mad? 
we are talking of law, we are talking of uh, anything to do with medical, doctors, we want medical, we want engineers, and you are talking of art. Forgetting that without art, you can't even read other subjects. So when you read art, you are opened and you can do better. You can see better. The artist is everywhere. You can see the creativity of the work that has been done. It's just ingenious, some of the materials that they have used to put some of this artwork to, to, together. It's really great and we should encourage them. Yeah, there's a lot to do. And all you have to do is allow your mind to roam around, create something. Some of the materials that have been created here, they are created from scratch, they're unique. I'm Haja Zainab Shamsuna Ahmed. I watch Visual Impressions and I urge everyone to keep watching Visual Impressions. Very nice program. Those artists have effectively communicated to us aesthetically and purposefully too. I hope you enjoyed every bit of our art in today. So keep a date with us next week on the same station and at the same time i am omar omar mohammed and i'm going to say bye for now